All right, so today we're going to be leaving off or we're going to be starting off with part two. Now, we did part one of hypothyroidism on Monday, and I'm going to put a link uh, on this video, either on the YouTube video itself, which you can click, or in the uh, description below. And the previous lecture kind of discussed everything up until treatment options. And I even added the uh, show notes. I added the lecture notes uh, on the website. So if you're interested in even going uh, a little bit more in depth, because I did add some notes that I didn't necessarily present on the video lecture, on the podcast lecture, then again, I'll put the, the link to the show notes in the description below as well. So today we're going to be starting off with the treatment of hypothyroidism, the different options and to how to manage. So getting into the treatment options for hypothyroidism. Now, treatment is fairly simple, right? We're giving levothyroxine. We're giving levothyroxine until we can reach what's called a euthyroid state. Now, what guides the euthyroid state, what guides our therapy is going to be the TSH. So we're giving uh, levothyroxine until we can get a euthyroid state with a normal TSH. Now, most laboratories, you're going to have an upper limit of normal of five. However, most experts are going to agree that a TSH of three is what should be um, ideally reached because the majority of patients who have a euthyroid, who are in a euthyroid state, I should say, without hypothyroidism are going to have a TSH level of around two. So this is the reason why most experts say three. However, upper limit of normal is going to be five. Now it's estimated that about 80% of T4 is going to be absorbed and levothyroxine, the medication, is going to have a half-life of about seven days. This is why we can dose levothyroxine once a day. Now you have to remember though, T4, synthetic T4, which is levothyroxine, is what's considered to be a pro-hormone. This is later going to be converted into T3. T3 is the active hormone, right? And this gets converted in the peripheral tissues. So the dose of therapy, right? The dose of, the dose of therapy is considered to be 1.6 micrograms per kilogram per day. This is the average, and it's going to vary. Uh, some patients or some clinicians just go straight to saying, well, they can, you know, kind of guesstimate. We'll start around 50. We'll start on 100. But really, it's going to be 1.6 uh, micrograms per kilogram per day. And the majority of patients, right, the average adults, we can start off at 100 micrograms per day. It's really a good starting point. And then we can adjust as needed. Remember, how are we adjusting? We are drawing TSH levels and we're adjusting the dose accordingly. If we haven't reached our target TSH, continue to increase until we have. Now in older patients, right, older patients should really be started at a lower dose. Now we're talking about 50 micrograms. The reason is we want to reduce complications, right? The problem with the older adults is the heart. So when we give levothyroxine, remember it's a hormone um, and it's going to increase cardiac demand. So those patients who have coronary heart disease should really be started at an even lower dose now we're talking 25 micrograms, and then we titrate slowly. So this is a very important notion. The average adult, we can do 100. The older adult, 50. The older adult with uh, coronary disease, we're doing 25. Now, how they take the medication is going to be very important, and it's going to be very important that you educate your patients because the patient needs to be fasting, and they need to be fasting for one hour before they eat breakfast. This is very important. Otherwise, it's not going to be properly absorbed. Now, patients should also make sure that they're waiting a couple of hours, uh, a couple of hours after they've taken their uh, medication before ingesting calcium supplements, PPIs, and iron supplements. These supplements here are going to interfere with levothyroxine absorption. So completely empty stomach. They have to wait a few hours before taking these supplements. They have to wait at least one hour before ingesting any type of food. Now, after we uh, start the medication, right? we have to recheck TSH levels. And the problem is, although the patient might start to feel better after a couple of weeks, it's really gonna take about six weeks for TSH levels to change on laboratory um, examination. So we're checking the TSH after six weeks, right? Symptoms, like I said, are gonna improve after two to three weeks, but we can't necessarily only base it on symptoms. We also have to check TSH levels. If the TSH remains high, then the dose should be increased. And then again, we're checking at six weeks. And the same is true. Do not check at two to three weeks because the patient feels fine and then see that the TSH is not where we want it and then increase the dose. It's way too soon to check. 
Now, once the patient has reached this youth thyroid state, then we can check the TSH every year. We can check it sooner if the patient starts to develop any symptoms. However, if you've been stable, we're good. We can do a yearly check um, to make things easy. When they come in for their annual physical exam, we can go ahead and throw a TSH on there. Now, we need to be careful not to overtreat patients uh, because they can develop, I should say, hy uh, subclinical hyperthyroidism and over hypothyroidism increases the risk of atrial fibrillation. So if we overtreat, we give more medication than they're supposed to have, then this can be dangerous. Hyperthyroidism is a dangerous one. Hypothyroidism, not so much. Hyperthyroid, it's like giving a ton of energy, um, a ton of stimulants. We're overworking the heart. This is very important. Now, women on estrogen therapy and those who are pregnant are going to typically need much higher levels of levothyroxine, right? They're going to need higher doses of these T4. Estrogen increases TBG. TBG stands for thyroxine binding globulin. Now, central hypothyroidism, right? Before patients are started on levothyroxine, if they have uh, central hypothyroidism, we have to do an adrenal function test with ACTH stimulation tests, right? We need to make sure that we don't have any type of issue there because if we have adrenal insufficiency, then we have to give glucocorticoids while giving levothyroxine. Otherwise, we're going to precipitate what's called an adrenal crisis. So very important. We have to check adrenal function before starting levothyroxine if the patient is suspected to have central hypothyroidism. Dosing in this population is going to be the same as in primary hypothyroidism. And these patients are going to be assessed with free T4, not TSH. That's the difference. If you have central hypothyroidism, then you're not producing TSH as you should be producing. Therefore, this number is not going to be helpful in determining the need to adjust the dosage. So patients who have central hypothyroidism should really be treated um, and measured with free T4. Now, remember, when we're talking about subclinical hypothyroidism, for the most part, most healthy adults without symptoms should not be treated until they have a TSH over 10. Once you get to a TSH of about 15, it's uh, very, very likely that they are eventually going to develop into, into a hypothyroid state. So they're going to leave the subclinical state, develop a hypothyroid state. If you have symptoms, then we can consider treating subclinical hypothyroidism with a TSH of less than 10. So that's the quick overview for treatment. Remember, big take. So big takeaway here, it's only one medication. It's called levothyroxine. This is T4, which is a pro-hormone that gets converted into T3 in the peripheral tissues. Levothyroxine needs to be taken on an empty stomach one hour before food and a few hours before ingesting any calcium supplements, iron supplements, or PPIs. Very, very important. You're rechecking the TSH after six weeks. However, patients can start to feel the improvement, start to feel better after a couple of weeks. Don't overtreat the patient. Some patients will ask to continue to increase the dose. And some patients like to be in that hyperthyroid state, the subclinical hyperthyroid state, because they feel like they have more energy. They notice that they're losing weight. They notice they can get more things done. They're a little bit more alert. This is not healthy. This is overworking the body. This is overworking the heart. And this can lead to uh, complications as well. We can uh, precipitate atrial fibrillation, different arrhythmias. So we want to be careful of that. That concludes today's lecture. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can do so by email, andrew at physicianassistantboards.com, or you can send a DM over to my Instagram, which is A-N-D underscore R-E-I-D, or the PA Boards Instagram, P-A-B-O-A-R-D-S. Thank you so much. Take care. Have a great weekend.